One of the best ways to learn is to be able to work alongside someone who knows what they're doing and can show you how to do something. With Snowflake, you can control Snowflake either using the interface or SQL commands. But with the SQL commands, you really have to have some experience writing them before you can understand how they work and how to write them off the top of your head. But not many people actually do that. They use some assistive tools. But nonetheless, there is actually a nice way that you can do this just by using the Snowflake interface, then looking at the query afterwards and then viewing the SQL that's written by Snowflake. Let me show you how. Let's get stuck in. Okay, I'm here in the Snowflake interface. I'm actually looking at the new version of the interface. If this looks very modern compared to what you're used to, you can actually switch back to the old version of the console just by hitting classic console. You have to log in again. And once you've logged in again, you go back to the old way of doing things. And if you wanna go back to the modern way of doing things, then you can just go ahead and hit the snow side option just here on the top right hand side and it'll open another tab. So you can actually have them side by side, um, at least for now that's going to be the case. In the future that might disappear. But let me show you what I'm trying to explain. I'm still learning Snowflake and I'm still learning how to write the SQL commands to control the Snowflake system. And in essence, the way I'm sort of learning to do this is by using the interface to do things I would normally do, then seeing what query was generated to create that activity. Now, this might not be familiar to lots of people, but in essence, everything you do here in the interface is actually going to create a query statement. You can actually look at it. So let's just do something very basic. Let's, let's go to my data set here, and you'll see that I have two databases. I'm just using the Snowflake trial, so if you're using the trial as well, you'll have exactly the same set of data. You'll see there's two databases. There's one called Snowflake and one called Snowflake sample data. I'm gonna actually open Snowflake because that's the, the sort of central data Database that Snowflake used to show you information about your Snowflake instance. So we can actually kind of look at the metadata that's sitting behind Snowflake in this particular area. I'll go in here to the information schema and we'll just take a look at some of the data that we've got here. We've got the databases, we've got things like columns. I'll scroll down to the tables list. This is probably going to be the easiest one to look at and you'll see that you get this representation here. This is in fact just a preview that's um, been generated by the interface. But if I click data preview, what that actually does is it kicks off a query that's running off the compute warehouse. You can see it says here compute warehouse and you get a table. Now what that table did is it generated a SQL command. So let's go and look at what that SQL command looks like. Let's go over here to activity on the left hand side and we look at the query history you'll see that there's actually quite a few things that I've been running. Now this is a brand new trial instance. You can see that everything that I've run has literally just been done in the last few minutes. And so if I go to the very top query, you can see that I actually get the query that was run and I get the specific SQL. It's been limited to 100 rows, but in essence, this is how it's querying from that particular table. So I can actually go and take that copy, go to a worksheet, I have a worksheet here that's open from a few minutes ago. Let's go ahead and open that. And you can see that I can actually just go ahead and paste it there. It actually had something already in there, but this time I'm gonna load something slightly different. And I'm gonna hit run just by highlighting this. I always get in the habit of highlighting then hitting run because what you don't want to do is make the mistake of basically running the entire SQL statement when you only meant to run a small section of it. So I just, I'm just learning to do this uh, with most tools. Uh, I'm still sort of fresh to this. If there's a better way of doing it, let me know in the comments. But as you can see, I ran that query again, uh, it ran in 1.2 seconds and you get the same table. So that's a very sort of simple way of doing this. Now, okay, let's go ahead and look at this in a slightly different context. Let's go back to the home page. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to data and I'm gonna to go to the databases option. Now, what I'm gonna do is create a new database and we're gonna have a look at the SQL that this creates. So let's go ahead and write the uh, name here. So we'll call this um, Tableau Tim uh, Test. Uh, oh, I can't do uh, hyphens there, so I have to do underscore test. Let's do that and we'll call this um, test DB. And uh, once we've done that, we'll hit create. That will go ahead and create a database. Of course, once the database has been created, there's actually nothing in that database. So you'll see, we just go in, there's nothing there. But again, we can go to the activity area, look at the queries, and you can see here's the SQL that was used to create that. Uh, create database, identify a Tableau Tim test, comment equals test DB. That's essentially what was done. And so we can go ahead and delete the database and we're gonna use the SQL statement to do the exact same thing again this time around. So let's go ahead back to the data area and we can go ahead and go to Tableau Tim uh, test. And what we want to do is drop this. Now, 
The new Snow Slide interface is a little bit cleaner. It's, it's, it's sort of, I find it a little bit harder to sort of get around. I prefer the old interface, which, which was sort of familiar in some senses. So what you do is you go to the very top right hand side here, you see these three dots, which are never descriptive. Go ahead and select drop, and this will basically go ahead and delete this database. So remove the database tablet and test from the system. A version will be retained in time travel for a specified amount of time. Let's go ahead and drop that, and you'll see that it disappears from this list. That in itself was a query, so we can go ahead and look at that as well. So if I just go ahead and refresh this, and uh, just give it a bit of a second, yes, you'll see that the drop option came up there. So this was the SQL to drop it, and this was the SQL to create it. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna grab this, I'll rename it uh, just to make it slightly different. Let's go to my worksheet, go back into the same worksheet I was creating before, and I'm just gonna go ahead and paste that in there. And I'm going to call this slightly different. I'm going to call this tabletim test underscore v2. It doesn't like uh, spaces. And uh, I'll call this test db a second time round. Okay. And now that we've done that, we're going to hit run just on the specific line. Remember, highlight the line, then hit run. Then it will go ahead and it will create the database. Tableau uh, tim test v2 successfully created. Let's go to our databases and check that that's worked. Go back, go to data, and there you have the test database. So if you're learning Snowflake, this is a really nice way to have sort of a soft landing into the technology, but also understand the best way to write certain SQL statements to get them to work. Now, there will be some instances where you just have to go and look at the documentation, but I think this is a good place to start. You can almost go through during the trial, creating lots of different sort of walkthroughs of something. And then once you've got that down, you can then look at your worksheet and look at, okay, this is everything that was done to create this setup. And you can then use that, save that in GitHub or do whatever you need to, to sort of perpetuate it for the future. So you can learn from it. If you've enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments below. Snowflake is slightly different to what I normally record, but hey, I'm learning Snowflake, so I thought I'd bring you along on the journey. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.